So fundamentally, a disciple is a learner. That's what the word means. Um, but it's somebody who's learning to live in a relationship with Jesus Christ in a particular way, a submissive way, a way that says that Jesus is Lord and that he is the most important person in my life. And I want to learn how to live my life from observing him and living with him and listening to him. So it's someone who's in a relationship with Jesus and in that relationship is committed to learning how to live their life through the lens of Jesus' life. Yeah, uh, really good question. And the word make can be a bit of an obstacle because it sounds a bit sort of technical in, in a way. But again, it's relational. You, you make disciples by living the Jesus life with and alongside others. It's caught rather than taught or as much as taught. And it's learned by example as much as by exhortation. So when Jesus said to his disciples, go into the world and make disciples, he then said two things. He said, baptize them into the name of the Father, Son, Spirit. And that for me is about a whole new identity, a whole new way of life, surrounded by the love of God the Father, the example of Jesus the Son, and the power of God the Holy Spirit. So new life, a new identity. And secondly, Jesus said, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. So it's a life of obedience. It's a life of submitting oneself to Christ and saying, as Lord, I trust that you know best. So it's about helping people discover a new identity and to live a new life fundamentally by living that example alongside them and by teaching them uh, as they go. I think that the language of discipleship and the idea of being a disciple has been really, really helpful for me in my own Christian journey. When I first came to faith many years ago, the language wasn't used very much. Uh, what we talked about was becoming a Christian or converting to Christ which is good language and helpful language, but it also has its limitations. And I found that one of the limitations was the idea was that, you know, on day naught, you're, you're a sinner and you're not going to heaven. On day one, you've come to Christ, you are saved and now you are going to heaven. But, but what else is involved in, in this transaction, as it were? It didn't feel like entering a lifelong relationship. It felt like a deal that was sealed at a certain moment when I prayed a certain prayer. Now, praying the prayer is important and the language of conversion is important. So I'm not saying those things are unhelpful, but for me personally, I found the language of discipleship has really helped me embrace the idea of, of being on a lifelong journey with Jesus as my friend, as my Lord, as my companion, as my guide. And that idea of being on a journey, and a journey which has ups and downs. So the language of being a Christian can sometimes communicate being holy, being perfect. And of course, there is some truth in that. But there's also truth, isn't there, that for most of us, if not all of us, if we're honest, on our journeys with Jesus, there are downs as well as ups. There are failures as well as successes. And I've drawn great comfort from the pattern of Peter in the Gospels, who is held up to us almost as the exemplar disciple. Great highs, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But also great lows, I don't even know the man. And something about that is... is, is really honest about what it means to be a disciple. Following Jesus is not easy. We blow it sometimes, but it doesn't mean we're not a disciple. It just means actually we're on the journey with Jesus and we've perhaps got some repenting to do along the way. Well, I've, I've got loads and loads of stories because I've been in Christian ministry now for 35 years and almost every year I've seen people come to faith in different ways. and. And, and you know, it's, it's always a thrill to see people transform by walking with Jesus. And the most natural transformation comes out of that individual's walking with Jesus. In other words, it's not that we've sat people down over the years and said, now you're a Christian, you mustn't do this and you must do that, and laid a whole lot of new laws on people. But my experience has been that the closer people walk with Jesus and the more real their relationship with Jesus, the more natural that transforming is. It's truly a transforming friendship. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a fantastic baptismal service here at Thornbury Baptist Church, and there was somebody baptised, uh, a young woman in her early 30s, a professional woman, um, no Christian background at all, but been searching and inquiring for a number of years, and, and finally, this last summer, started coming along to the church here to, to find out more. She did a, an Alpha course and a course at another church where her friend went, and slowly, slowly, slowly began to put the pieces together, and, and God really encountered her and she began to engage with him and her life has transformed and listening to her baptismal testimony it just warmed my heart really about how Jesus is still in the business of changing lives. Now Jesus himself said that, that if you love me you'll keep my commandments. 
and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. And I think it's really important to get the connections there. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And out of that relationship, that obedient relationship to Jesus as Lord, you'll progressively know truth, reality, what really is going on in life. And that truth will set you free. And I've seen that so many times over the years. And it comes out of relationship. It doesn't come out of just out of teaching. Teaching is important. I spend a lot of my time doing that. But, but fundamentally, it's not me that changes anyone's life. It's actually the presence of Jesus and the walk that they encounter uh, yeah, with him in everyday life. Be a disciple. Um, learn more and more what it means to love Jesus and to submit your life to him. If a disciple is really somebody who loves Jesus heart, soul, mind and strength and is determined to put Jesus first in everything, to know Jesus better, then do that. Because we can only reproduce in others what we ourselves have. We can't give away what we haven't got. Jesus himself said, look, if you're thirsty for a real life, come to me and drink it in. And then out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. If you want to reproduce something other people, you've got to make sure you've got it yourself. So the first rule for disciple makers is be a disciple. But also see discipleship not just as something that's about spiritual life or religious life or Christian life, but being a disciple, learning from Jesus. What are we learning from Jesus? We're learning from Jesus how to be a human being. We're not just learning how to be spiritual, how to be religious. We're learning how to deal with our money, how to handle our marriages, how to deal with everyday life. So in everyday life, live out your faith. Live out in front of others, in front of friends, at the coffee shop, down the pub, at work, wherever you spend your time. Live that discipleship out in front of other people. Let them see the difference that it makes. Because if that's what overflows out of your life, and if the life of Christ truly is attractive, as I believe it is, then sooner or later you'll become a disciple maker whether you set out to do that or not. Because people want to know why you're relaxed when everybody else is stressed, why you're generous when everybody else is mean. They'll want to know what difference it makes to you and why it makes that difference. So to be a disciple maker, yes, there are technical things to be done, there's facts to be learned, read your Bible, study, pray, all of those things are important. But the fundamental thing I want to say is be a deep, lifelong disciple of Jesus Christ and almost inevitably you will become a disciple maker. Mm -hmm.